welcome back friends to the channel Frugal Money Saver. My name is Emmy, my husband is Paul. We're an early retirement debt and mortgage free couple living in the state of New York. And our channel basically shows you how to have a full abundant life while spending less money. I had to share Dixie zooming with you earlier. <laughs> We went to my brother's house and she just went berserk. You know, Dixie, she doesn't like grass. Well, she was all over the place. So cute. So I had to share her with you. Today's video, we have a lot going on, but we hope each part of it is very encouraging. We are going to make a zucchini stew that is over the top delicious. Paul approved 100%. Easy. I personally think it's even better than my vegetable soup I showed you. I really do. It was so good. We are going to visit my brother's house, look at his gardens. Then it is viewer's choice or challenge. And Karen asked us, how do you make some of those delicious Starbucks or coffee house drinks at home to save some money? And we're going to share one of those with you. And we're also going to talk about something along those lines that so many of us continue to do even though we know it costs so much more to do this. So sit back, relax, grab a cup of tea or coffee, and let's get started. The first thing I wanna share with you is I wanna get in the kitchen and show you how to make this amazing zucchini stew. It goes in the crock pot, it's only one extra step. You have to brown a little bit of sausage, but other than that, it goes right in the crock pot. Super simple ingredients, extremely economical. Right now, a lot of local produce stands or your own garden have zucchini in abundance. Stop and Shop has it on sale again for 97 cents a pound this week. So if you have a Stop and Shop by you, you may want to grab a couple for this amazing recipe. Let's turn the camera around and get in the kitchen. The first thing I'm doing is browning a piece of hot Italian sausage and a piece of sweet Italian sausage in a little bit of water in a frying pan. We want to get all the grease out of this. This is one of those recipes where you look at the humble ingredients and you wonder how these simple ingredients can make one of the most delicious tasting soups slash stews you will encounter. So we're going to start with three cups of zucchini in about half inch pieces roughly. Those three cups were about two medium zucchini. I have two links of Italian sausage, one sweet, one hot, that I browned to get the grease out of. I have a half of onion that I chopped. I have about four leaves of fresh basil, but you can use dry basil. I have a teaspoon of sugar. I have two cloves of garlic, one very large stalk of celery that I chopped, and some Italian seasoning. We're probably gonna add a little salt and pepper to this as well. One 14.5 ounce can of diced tomatoes. I will link the original recipe down below, but you know I always tweak it. So this is as easy as taking everything after it's chopped, putting it in our crock pot. We've got our celery. You can add other vegetables too, but we really want that flavor of the zucchini to come in. Got our can of diced tomatoes, juice and all. And now I'm going to put in one, two, three cups of water. You could definitely use broth, but I don't see any reason why we need to. I'm gonna put in some Italian seasoning and that's to taste our teaspoon of sugar, but mm, that seems too much, so I just stopped. So it's really like a half a teaspoon of sugar. I don't want it too sweet. And then two cloves of garlic that we minced and put through our press. So we're going to give this a good mix now. I'm gonna be adding some black pepper. 
I'm not going to add extra salt because the sausage is pretty salty and so are the tomatoes. But please feel free to add more salt to taste if you need it. And that is it. So I'm going to cover this, put it on high, and we're going to let it cook for about three to four hours. We will check it. This cooked on high for four hours. But keep an eye on your crock pot because every crock pot is different. Now what I'm going to do is just grate some Parmesan cheese on top. Right before it was done, I'd say about 20 minutes before it was done, I took spaghetti and I broke it into little tiny pieces, as you can see, and I dropped that into the hot liquid and I just let that cook for the last 20 minutes or so with the zucchini soup. It looks and smells amazing. This is a really economical, hearty, rustic meal. We wish you bon appetito. Really, really delicious. So I encourage you to try that recipe. If you want to leave the sausage out, of course you can. It really gives the flavor such depth. It lends a little bit of a fennel taste and a little bit of a saltiness. Really good. So give that one a try. Now we're gonna head over to my brother's house. We were invited over for a quick barbecue. I made two delicious desserts and I'm gonna show you a picture of them. I made a tropical pineapple coconut orange marmalade cake, which was over the top, everyone loved it. And then I made some good old fashioned peanut butter brownies. And then I just wanna show you their garden and some of the things that are going on over at his house. This is my brother and sister-in-law's beautiful garden. Look at this. It is just gorgeous. We're gonna go down a little closer. If you all remember, back in April, Paul and I had given our niece a gift of pumpkin seeds and gourd seeds. She loves to grow those type of plants. I wanted to give you a follow-up and I'm gonna let her show you. Now, what is this not? I'm not sure the name of it, but it, started out as the top being all green and the bottom being yellow but now it's turning into a striped gourd oh so i'm really excited and this vine is of that one particular gourd and it, it's still growing as you guys can see over here look at it and this is just from a simple gift we had given her of seeds that we had put away for the season that we had preserved for her because we knew she loved this Oh my goodness, and I see other ones over here. Yeah, over here. Oh my goodness, look at that one. This one has bumps on it, which I'm super excited about, and I love the shape of it. I've never really seen one like this. I'm getting another baby up here as well, so oh. I can't wait to see what they turn out to be like. Look at how beautiful. Look at her mom's butterfly bushes. Look at this garden. They have such a green thumb. These are where I get all my perennials that she shares with me. But I am so thrilled that these are growing so beautiful. Look at how healthy. So this was just a simple gift we had given her with a book on how to grow pumpkins and gourds. No matter where you live, if you put your mind to it, you can grow some food. Now we are in 
New York, and this is my sister-in-law's lemon tree. Look at this. Look at the lemons. When do they get ripe? Um, January, February. So they get ripe in around January or February, she just told me. They will bring this in the house for the winter. Look at how many there are. She has an amazing green thumb, just loaded with lemons. How about his lemon tree? I am telling you, if there is a will, you can grow food wherever you are. In the winter, they do take it inside because it is too cold here in the Northeast for a lemon tree. But man, look at the lemons on that tree. They share with us every year. They are so delicious and they just do an abundance of vegetables as well. And I just wanted to share with you how that little gift that Paul and I gave my niece because we knew exactly what she would love is now making her so happy. She planted the seeds, she's been nurturing them and they're producing for her. So that's always neat to see as well. Now let's talk about something that we all do from time to time, some of us more than others, that we know costs us more, but yet we continue to do it. So what is that? That is running through the drive-through, running through Starbucks, picking up pizza, any kind of convenience foods pre-made by someone else. Why do we do it? Well, we went online and we did some research and so much of it is psychological. The first part is we know it's super convenient to run through a drive-through and pick stuff up. But let me show you something before we go any further that we just got in the mail from our local Burger King. Take a look at this. I just want to show you how prices, even in fast food restaurants, are starting to climb. Here's the coupons for our local Burger King for the month of July. $12.99 for the family bundle, $8.99 for a Whopper meal for two, $4.99 for two original chicken sandwiches. Just got the new coupons that are good through September. So here's September's. We went from $12.99 to $14.99, $8.99 to $10.99, $4.99 to $5.49. Let's look at these over here. $3.99 over there to $4.49. $3 to $3.49, $4 to $4.99, I honestly was shocked to see everything had jumped just about $2 on the major sandwiches. Those are some price hikes, aren't they? And when you look at a Whopper that they are charging that amount of money for two Whoppers, two fries, and two drinks, well, we know right now you can get a large bottle of like store brand soda for 99 cents, 64 ounce. So right off the bat there. French fries, we went and priced them at Stop and Shop, big bag, $3. Stop and Shop has ground beef right now, $2.99 a pound. And I know Walmart a lot of times and Aldi are comparable to that. So think of what you've just spent. You buy a pound of ground beef for $3. Well, for $3, you just got four hamburgers that are a quarter pound each out of your grocery store meat. So what else do you add to it? Tomato, a little lettuce, a bun, and french fries and a soda. You're not coming anywhere near that $11 price for two burgers, two sodas, and two fries. Think about that. So why do we do it? Like I said before I showed you the flyer, convenience. Convenience. It's easy. We don't have to cook anything. We don't have to prep anything. We just fly through that drive through and get what we need. Another reason, it's a reward. We are rewarding ourselves. Absolutely. I've had a hard week. I'm going to hit that drive through or I'm going to pick up a Starbucks. We're rewarding ourselves. It's saying to ourselves, you did a good job. Here you go. They are familiar. From New York to California, you walk into a Starbucks, you walk into a Burger King, a McDonald's, they're all the same. There is that familiar golden arches. 
or that Starbucks coffee cup. They are familiar and that comforts us. It makes us feel safe. It makes us feel good. And even a place like Starbucks, you walk into Starbucks, it smells amazing. They have this beautiful calming music playing. The baristas are over the top friendly. So many pluses, right? But if we're looking to save money, we have to look at these type of purchases as nothing more than a treat that occur infrequently. Because if we're doing it all the time, it really adds up. And a treat once in a while is awesome. We do it if we're out and about and I have a coupon or something, but we do it very, very infrequently. And I would encourage you to do the same. Just if you're looking to save money, this is one way to really cut back. And another thing, it tastes so much better when you make it at home. It really does, especially those burgers and fries and so much more delicious at home. And you know what's going into them too. Now, as far as a Starbucks treat, we are going to make a vanilla chai latte together. So good. I'm gonna turn the camera around and this is a winner. Here you go. It's pumpkin season. Everyone is talking about pumpkin flavored drinks. And I was asked by Karen, how do you recreate something yummy from like Starbucks at home? And I am going to tell you how to make a vanilla chai pumpkin spiced drink that is over the moon delicious. First of all, we're gonna need a bag of vanilla chai black tea. Now you can get any brand, but I got the Bigelow. This runs for about $3 a box, but you get a ton of them. I've used most of them. Some cold coffee. I have about six tablespoons here from Paul's Pot this morning, but I would never use that much. A little pumpkin pie spice milk and sugar. That is all you need. We are going to create a delicious pumpkin spice warm chai tea. I don't have a milk frother, okay? But I do have an immersion blender. In this container, I have a quarter cup of milk. Use something that has high sides. Now I'm just gonna take my immersion blender and I'm gonna froth my own milk. I wish I had a clear mug to show you how beautiful this is. Sorry for the shadows, it's early in the morning. But we're gonna use my Moana mug. So I have got one of these vanilla chai tea bags. This smells so good when, as soon as I took it out of the wrapper. Fill three quarters with boiling water. And I'm gonna let that see for several minutes. The tea bag soaked for several minutes. I'm going to now add two tablespoons of coffee, just black coffee to it. I'm gonna add, for me, just about a teaspoon of sugar, but you make it as sweet as you'd like it. We're gonna give that a little stir. We're gonna add our frothy milk on top. And then the crowning touch is a little pumpkin pie spice right on top and you have got yourself one delicious vanilla chai tea i am still drinking it right here a little wired but i'm good it is so delicious really good i encourage you to try going online looking up these delicious coffee and tea beverages that you can make at home and save so much money. Like we said, as an occasional treat, that's awesome. But don't make it part of your everyday. Today's question of the day. What fast food or specialty coffee item, tea item, treat that most people will run out to a drive through and get do you make at home? This vanilla chai, I make at home all the time for myself. And we also do special burgers for Paul. Like if we're having a hamburger, I will fry up extra bacon so he gets like a Baconator burger. Things like that. What takeout food or beverage do you create at home to save money? Do you make your own pizza? 
Do you make Chinese? What do you do? And if you have an easy, simple recipe, share it down below. You know we love that kind of encouragement because it helps our viewers as well as ourselves. So we thank you for spending this time with us. We appreciate you all so much. Please give this a big thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't. Come on in and be part of our family. We would love to have you. We ask you to stay safe. We ask you to be well. And above all, we wish you blessings. Bye-bye. God bless you.